Here are the 10 manufacturing processes that will give you goosebumps. In this forest in Thailand, this man just hung a small bucket on the trunk of a tree and made an incision on the ecor. You have understood everything. He wants to collect latex from this tree to make rubber. However, this man will have to wait a long time before the bucket is partially filled, because the collection of latex takes a few hours. Sometimes it can even take up to six hours. After that time, the man will take the latex to a workshop where it will be cleaned, formic acid added and coagulated, before being rolled, rinsed and dried. This will result in thick rubber sheets, which, once processed, will be ready to be exported. And that's it. This man, but also his companions, will have finally succeeded in obtaining their rubber, albeit at the cost of great labor. However, he can be sure that once sold, his rubber will be used to make other useful products that we use every day. And that will only make him prouder, of course. You are often used to wearing contact lenses, either to correct your vision or simply to change the color of your eyes. Then you are not the only one. However, you were somewhat surprised to learn that lenses go through a rather complex manufacturing chain. So, to better understand this, you watched one of the videos that show the contact lens manufacturing process, which gave you a clearer idea of how these thin and fragile accessories are made. Not only did you discover that the production of contact lenses goes through many delicate steps, but since that day, you can't stop thinking about it and feeling chills every time. You put your lenses on your eyes. That's right. Seeing how it's made gave you a bit of a chill, didn't it? Well, you'll get over it in time, but you won't be able to wear your lenses as often as you used to. Tennis racket manufacturers sometimes have champions of the little yellow ball among their customers. Of course, their primary goal is to provide these professional players with top quality rackets. However, these manufacturers know that to do so, their rackets must meet a maximum of criteria and requirements so that the players who will use them will not encounter any problems during the game. In order to do this, these craftsmen carefully choose the materials such as carbon fiber, aluminium and even paint that will be used to manufacture the rackets and respect with great precision all the manufacturing steps from the design of the frame to the manufacture of the strings. In this way, they achieve their goal of good quality snowshoes even if the manufacturing process is often difficult and complex at certain stages, especially if the snowshoes are handmade. But all this is forgotten as soon as the final customer, the player, expresses his satisfaction. By the way, it is thanks to all these good efforts that some of the racket manufacturers have earned their good reputation all over the world forever. This makes them real champions in their own right. Many women around the world use sanitary napkins every day to protect themselves during menstruation. However, most of them, if not all, do not know how and what these pads are made of. Some of them, especially the most curious, do not hesitate to search on the internet the manufacturing process of these essential sanitary products. However, if they end up on one of the videos that show how sanitary napkins are made, like this one, they are still shocked, even horrified, when they discover how the raw materials that make up these napkins are used. Well, during the process, these are sometimes in direct contact with the machines, which makes these women ask themselves many questions about their hygiene. But not having much choice, they still continue to use these sanitary napkins, preferring to close their eyes to what they have discovered. However, this does not prevent them from becoming much more vigilant and choosing more carefully the brand of pads they will use, while others now prefer to resort to more artisanal methods or make their own sanitary pads. 
Hugo de Boon and Cohen Muirkirk are two young men from the Netherlands who are very interested in being environmentally friendly. That's why, in 2015, they wanted to implement an idea that answered the ecological question perfectly. Make leather out of mangoes. These two young men certainly had to face the skepticism and round eyes of all those who did not believe in their project. But far from being discouraged, they said to work, transforming the unsealable mangoes destined for the garbage dump into a pulp to which they added additives before drying it and cutting it into sheets in another workshop. Not only did Hugo and Cohen find a good solution to food waste by using unsealable mangoes, but they also managed to create an original product by transforming fruit into leather. And all this in a totally environmentally friendly way. Any of us would think that this could get them into trouble with animal leather producers, but the two young men assure that they are not trying to replace the real leather we all know with their product. However, thanks to their mango leather, Hugo de Boon and Cohen Muirkirk are now considered genius inventors. If you're not one of those people who grow a beard or mustache, then you probably shave every day. And of course, you're always looking for the best razor blades on the market. But lately, while holding your razor in your hand, you found yourself wondering how anyone can make such thin and sharp blades. Curious as you are, you immediately started looking for the way these products are made. You discovered that razor blades are made from a strip of very pure steel that is perforated in presses, treated to become hard and soft at the same time, covered with a layer of product that prevents it from rusting, and then sharpened to give the blade an extreme finesse. Wow. All those steps made you a little dizzy, but at least you know what your razor blades are made of. And then you'll think about it every time you shave. Workers in pencil factories work in different positions where everyone hopes to get the job done. Because in pencil factories, these people are not allowed to make mistakes. To do their job well, these pencil makers follow the steps correctly. It all starts with the mixing of graphite and clay. Other steps follow, such as adding color pigments, shaping the leads and drying them in ovens, then placing them on the wooden grooves. All that remains is to add the final decorative touch to the pencils. Once all these steps are completed, the workers end up with a good number of pencils, ready to be used on paper. But to achieve this result, these people put a lot of effort. Because as simple as it is, the pencil goes through a very complex manufacturing process. However, it can be said that after years of handling products and machines, these manufacturers are perfectly used to their work, despite its complexity. This makes them true craftsmen respected by artists around the world. See that man pouring the orange-colored liquid into those round molds? He would like to make a balloon. But for that, this man has to rely only on his hands and on these machines, which seem to be in a very bad state. Let's go. Let's get to work. Our friend pours liquid into the molds and clamps them tightly before exposing them to the heat. After a few turns, he dips them for a few moments in a barrel full of liquid, probably to cool them down. Then, as a last step, he unmolds the little ball before injecting air into it. And that's it. He ends up with beautiful orange plastic balloons bouncing happily on the floor. But to get these balloons, this person has to repeat the same steps over and over again. Phew! One can easily imagine the boredom of having to repeat the same thing over and over again, helping oneself as best as one can with the means at hand. This is not to mention the safety measures that seem to be absent in this workshop. But this person doesn't really hear it that way, because what matters to her is to make a lot of balloons. Although this may shock some of us, this man has nevertheless aroused the wonder of many people. This is a Chinese factory that makes suitcases and exports them all over the world. Obviously, their main goal is to sell as many suitcases as possible. However, not so long ago, this factory found itself on social networks. The cause? 
the unusual manufacture of its products. Indeed, suitcases of all colors and with different patterns on the surface are manufactured in no time, as shown in this video. The factory in question uses a process that consists of blowing a heated plastic sheet through a vacuum forming machine. Thanks to this machine, the structures of the cases are formed and then assembled before the finishing stage. This allows the factory to produce an incredible number of cases in record time. But to do this, it must also employ a large number of workers and ensure the loads of everyone. This is quite normal, as it is the case for any factory in the world, as long as these beautiful cases sell like hotcakes. And how? Thanks to this viral video that fascinated many, this factory will certainly sell even more suitcases in the future. Look at these men in this hexnut factory. They are there to earn a living, despite the precarious conditions in which they do their work. Here they are handling the metal and passing it through different machines, all with their bare hands. In the end, they get the little hexagonal nuts, but not without the risk of burning their fingers. Yet, from what we can see, these men are used to working this way. However, because of this video, these workers have gained the compassion of many people. And we end with one last process. Imagine you are on a large dairy farm. That's good because you've been wanting to see how cows are milked for milk for a very long time, right? You even want to experience it yourself by pulling on a cow's udder. But to your surprise, you notice that everything on this farm is automated. That's right! This farm uses an automatic milking system, but not only that, even the feeding of the cows is automated and controlled. So you'll be disappointed. However, to better understand how automatic milking works, you approach a group of cows whose teats are pushed into the milking claws, which allows you to get a closer look at this process that you have never seen before. You are a little shocked at first, and you can't help but imagine yourself in the shoes of those poor cows and think how much pain they must be in. However, your grimace of pain disappears immediately when you are told that this automatic milking system is not that painful for our friends, the cows, and moreover, it has many advantages for the farm. Indeed, in addition to being hygienic and profitable, automatic milking of cows does not require a large workforce. It also saves a lot of time, including cleaning time. So, if you were initially critical of automatic milking, you've changed your mind for good. Now, tell us in the comments, which of these manufacturing processes impressed or shocked you the most? Don't forget to subscribe and click here to watch another of our videos.